ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Gujarat Gas Limited Q1 FY25 earning conference call. As a reminder, all the participants' line will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to the coordinator, Ms. Setu Mathur Vyas from Anurag Services, LLP. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call of Gujarat Gas Limited. From Gujarat Gas Management, we have Mr. Rajesh Sivadasan, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Sandeep Dawe, Company Secretary, and Mr. Deepen Chauhan, Head Commercial and Marketing Business Development. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management, post which we will have a question and answer session. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Sandeep Dawe. Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to Q1 FY24-25 Earning Call of Gujarat Gas Limited. I am Sandeep Dawe, Company Secretary and Head of Corporate Communication on GGL. To give you a brief background about Gujarat Gas, DGL is the largest city, city gas distribution company in India. The company is operating in 27 geographical areas spread across six states and one union territory. We have a good mix of matured and emerging CTD areas. We have developed the pipeline network of more than 40,000 kilometers, which provide natural gas to more than 21,50,000 households, 4,400 industrial customers, and 15,200 commercial customers. We, have, we operate 811 CNG stations and serve approximately 4 lakh vehicles per day. We are happy to inform that we have achieved highest ever CNG volume of 2.98 mmSCMD in Q1, which is 14% higher than the Q1 of previous year. GGL aims to deliver affordable, reliable, and cleaner energy by operating responsibly and performing with effectively and governance sectors. As part of our commitment to ESG initiatives, we have taken various measures, which includes hydrogen blending pilot projects, which we have successfully completed with 5% blending. Now we have increased the blending level from 5% to 8%. We are also aggressively setting up CNG infrastructure as well as upgrading our CNG infrastructure to promote use of clean and green fuel. We also started injecting biogas into the GDL system. We have embarked on major digitization drive across various business operations and processes. Our major contribution to the environment is that by virtue of promoting use of sale of sale of natural gas to industrial customers in Q1, we have reduced burning of approximately 17,285 metric ton of coal per day. Further, to our CNG sales outlet, we have reduced combustion of approximately 2,946 kilometers of petrol per day during this Q1. At Gujarat Gas, we adhere to highest standards of safety and a strong culture of safety. GGL is an ISO certified organization for integrated quality, occupational health, safety, and environment management system. We build, operate, and maintain a safe and reliable gas network in our area of operation. With this brief background about Gujarat Gas, I now request Mr. Deepen Chavan to share business updates of GGL. Over to you, Deepen. Thank you, Sandeep. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I'll update on domestic and commercial segment. We are seeing a positive growth in the domestic segment. GGL's customer base is more than now 21.52 lakhs domestic customers. We are able to add 40,000 customers in the quarter. The commercial segment is showing a steady growth in connection numbers. We expect the number in the domestic and commercial segment to increase over a period of time as the new areas mature. GGL at present has a customer base of 15,200 commissioned commercial customers spread across our geography. Now let me update on the industrial segment. In the industrial segment, sales volume increased to 7.25 mmSCMD for quarter ended 30th June 2024. That was 
8 8 mm SCMD for the quarter ended 30th June 2023. <laughs> that is an increase of 23 percent. The more the volume increased by 37 percent from 3.82 mm SCMD in Q4 FY24 to 5.21 mm SCMD in Q1 FY25. In known more the market, volume increased by 2.5 percent from 1.98 mm SCMD in Q4 FY24 to 2.03 mm SCMD in Q1 FY25. The Morbi volume increased by 30% from 4.01 mm SCMD in Q1 FY24 to 5.21 mm SCMD in Q1 FY25. The known Morbi volume increased by 8.5% from 1.87 mm SCMD in Q1 FY24 to 2.03 mm CMD in Q1 FY25. We have been tracking business environment across all our operating areas, wherein we understand that the export market for ceramic industries is expected to remain subdued on account of multiple factors, including increase in the freight cost. Further, the Mobi volume shall be affected due to present August month, that is the festival of uh, Janmashtami and ongoing strong monsoons across our operating areas. However, GGR is hopeful that market will improve by the end of Q2 FY25. Finally, let me update on the CNG segment. I would like to highlight that we have achieved, we have achieved highest ever CNG sales volume of 2.98 mm CMD in Q1 FY25. In Q1 FY25, CNG sales in Gujarat increased by 12% over year over year and by 2% quarter over quarter, while outside Gujarat sales surged by 27% and 9% respectively. Overall, CNG sales across regions grew by 14% annually and 3% quarterly. CNG maintains significant price advantage, being approximately 47% cheaper than petrol and 15% cheaper than diesel. During this quarter, we have added three new CNG stations, enhancing accessibility to the customer. <laughs> this performance underscores a positive investment outlook driven by increasing consumer adoption and strategic infrastructure development, positioning CNG favorably in the energy market. This is all business update from my side. Now I will request Rajesh to speak further. Thanks, Dipen. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the earnings call of Gujarat Gas Limited for the first quarter for the financial year 24-25. I'd like to thank you, thank you all for attending this call today. I trust you would have gone through our financial results of the Q1 for the financial year 24-25, which has been which were reported on 6th of August, and the investor presentation which has been uploaded. Expanding the geographical coverage and expansion of the gas network has led to a drive in the CNG volumes. We have been able to grow the volumes at 19% from 9.2 mm SCMD in the corresponding quarter of Q1 in 23-24 to around 10.98 mm SCMD for the quarter one of the financial year 24-25. The current quarter has seen an overall volume increase of 13% as compared to the quarter four of the financial year 23-24. During, uh, during the quarter, the company has connected close to 37,400 37, domestic new uh, domestic customers, making a total PNG connection of more than 2.21.52 lakhs. The company has commissioned new industrial customers, having 2 lakh SCMT of uh, SMT volumes in the Q1 of the financial year 24-25. During the quarter, the company has invested close to 206 crores in the gas infrastructure. The company is presently having 40,200 kilometers of uh, P and steel pipeline network, along with 811 CNG stations, which is the backbone of our business. In terms of revenue, the company has registered a revenue from operations of 4,615 crores during the first quarter of financial year 24-25 against 3,924 crores for the corresponding quarter of 23-24. The company has reported a profit after tax of 330 crores during the quarter, quarter one of uh, financial year 24-25 as compared to 215 crores uh, uh, in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. That is an increase of close to 53 percentage. The company's EBITDA for the quarter one for the financial year 24-25 stands at 574 crores as compared to 
412 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year, an increase of close to 39 percentage. In terms of uh, rupee per SCM uh, EBITDA margin, uh, it stands at a close to 5.75 per SCM against 4.91 in the previous quarter of the corresponding previous corresponding year. We are closely monitoring the propane futures going forward in the medium term and the long term. Accordingly, we will stick to our strategy to calibrate this and strike a balance between volumes and margins for the quarters to come. The various government in our initiatives by the way of reducing VAT is helping CGD companies to grow volumes and compete with alternative fuels. During the quarter, the CNG volumes have grown to 2.98 uh, MMSCMD as compared to 2.61 MMSCMD in the corresponding quarter of 23 24 that's an increase of close to 14 percentage. EGL is currently operating around 811 CNG stations. During this quarter, GGL has added close to three new CNG stations. The Gujarat gas continues to have a credit rating of AAA stable for the long term and A1 plus for the short term from CARE, Crystal and India rating, which shows the holistic consensus and the trust on the operation capability of GGL. We have already uploaded our investor presentation in the GGL website. We hope you have gone through the same. With this, we open the floor for the question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Robal Sain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Good afternoon, sir. Congratulations on a strong credit number. I have three questions. Uh, firstly, with regards to Morbi, uh, I think it was mentioned that due to the festival, the weather, as well as some slightly slower exports, at least in the second quarter, numbers could be a bit more muted. Uh, is it fair to therefore assume that overall volumes, of, at least on a QOQ basis, would probably see a slight decline? Uh, of course, you can't share the numbers on the time. But is it possible to share the current run rate of volumes of Morbi uh, at this point of time? Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Yes. Means, as I mentioned earlier, means uh, there are uh, basically five major reasons as of now going in the mobile market. Number mm -hmm. one is of course the geopolitical situation. Uh, number two is the propane price. Number three mm -hmm. is festival season, which is very important in the mobile market. That is of the mass coming. Right. Monsoon is, uh, monsoon is somehow very strong this year. And number four, number five is the shipping. I think um, the, our customers are facing some issues uh, concerning the shipping uh, because of, of course, the disturbance in the uh, Middle East and uh, that part of the world. But we are right. expecting uh, there will be a deep of 30 to 40 percent. That will be temporarily uh, for mm -hmm. this quarter. Okay. 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 Thirty to forty percent. Then the volume going. Right? Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. So the second uh, question was a broader one in terms of CNG. Uh, the momentum uh, is it fair to assume that this quarter CNG station addition is slightly lower than what we have been maintaining for the last six seven quarters because the rate of addition of CNG stations has been very aggressive from what we have seen in the last two years. This quarter's number of just three stations. Any reason it has dropped off and what are the plans for the rest of the year, sir? Uh, we are aggressive, in fact, uh, but uh, we are uh, developing on so many fronts. For example, mm -hmm. we, are, we have planned 22 new CNG stations uh, this financial year and we, are, we have planned 62 upgradations in this uh, financial year. Apart from that, we have just introduced a new scheme called F Dodo that is fully dealer on dealer operated scheme where everything, mm -hmm. CapEx and everything will be uh, done by the dealer and uh, Gujarat Gas will provide uh, all kind of support and uh, gas to them. Uh, okay. We have received more than 600 applications for that, uh, for them uh, under this scheme and uh, we are about to issue letter of intent sometime next week. 
So once everything will be on the line, you can see I can now like to say that, but uh, exponential growth in year. Perfect. So last question, if I may. Uh, margin guidance, is there any thought of changing it upwards? Because if I remember correctly, you mentioned a range, I think, of 4.5 to 5.5 earlier. We have done 5.7, as was indicated this quarter. Uh, so any thoughts in terms of what a realistic guidance could be for 25 and 26? And what is the CAPEX uh, guidance for this year and the next? That's all for me. Yeah, we'll go by the earlier guidance of 4.5 to 5.5. And with respect to the CAPEX, we will be achieving close to 1,000 crores of CAPEX. For both years, sir? For, pardon? For the entire year? For both 25 as well as FI26? Or this is only for 25, sir? This is only for 25, 24, 25. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, sir. I'll come back to time. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yogesh Patil from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for giving me an opportunity. I have a few questions. Sir, as per your press release, the company has signed a volume of 0.63 mm CMD, which will be commissioned in the coming days. Sir, my question is, when do you expect this consumer will fully start consuming a volume? How many months they will consume it? And is there any pricing terms which you have signed with them uh, related to propane and the PNG industry? Yeah, this is my first question. Okay, so first uh, we would like to let you know that uh, within six months uh, the customers will be commissioned. So we'll achieve that volume target. That's what we have. Okay, okay. And, and my second question is again related to, sir, during the month of March 2024, you had offered a cheaper PNG industrial pricing formula compared to the propane, and you were expecting uh, more ceramic industries will tie up for at least one year PNG industrial volume. How many industries entered into the contract under this formula? Any update really helpful? We, we have received more than 150 responses to the our EOI. This is at the EOI stage. And uh, we are progressing on this uh, signing the agreement. And I think uh, we'll do it soon. So 0.63 MMS CMD is included under that EOI also? Pardon? No, so no, it is not, not, not included in this UI. Okay, okay. And, and the last question from my side, sir, uh, could you please share uh, a proportion of APM gas that you received for the priority segment during the quarter one? And if possible, can you give us more details on the non-APM gas sources? Right now you are getting a gas for the, your PNG industrial and the commercial side. We are getting nearly 75% of our allocated uh, uh, volume, and the uh, rest is uh, from the market. So can we get a breakup of 25% uh, uh, from where you are sourcing? Is it HPHT or any contracted LNG? We have, see, we have a long-term sources. From long-term sources, we are getting close to 27% of the entire volume. And from the spot, which we practically we are getting 40, 49 percentage. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. I'll come back in again. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivekanand Sabaraman from Ambit Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. So, on uh, extending a question that Probal asked, on CNG volumes. So from one mm SCMD to two mm SCMD volume, it took you around seven years to move there. Um, add that one, uh, double the volumes. Now uh, it seems that you are on a faster trajectory as far as CNG is concerned. Could you help us understand or, or think through the ramp up of this business given that you are now more keen on expanding infrastructure both within the state and outside the state. Uh, if, if there is any guidance or aspiration, let's say next three years or five years that you would like to provide, that's question number one. Secondly, on CNG itself, if you look at, let's say, the current infrastructure and uh, the way you are deriving volumes here, uh, 
the volume trajectory uh, with the current infrastructure is is there a way to look at it on uh, like for like basis the same stations the current existing stations the volume growth or or say uh, big cities volume growth versus say new areas volume growth within the cng business itself uh, that perspective will help us think through the volume ramp up of cng better thank you we means uh, as a company historically we are very bullish on uh, cng market uh, we are very aggressive also means uh, just to increase the our speed of uh, developing new infrastructure we have introduced this abdodo scheme apart from that we are in a major uh, process of uh, upgrading at least 60 plus cng stations this year and we are going to add our own 22 stations uh, this year also so if you just count the number i won't be surprised that the by year end we will add uh, triple digit uh, cng station numbers uh in this financial year right and and would you like to discuss about volume aspirations given that there is you, you are now disclosing things uh within gujarat outside gujarat uh, can you help us understand how volumes could scale up in the next few years the any way, targets that you have in mind the way we are the aggressively the way we are moving aggressively in the market i think uh, we are going to uh, uh, issue uh, at least 200 lois for in the first phase for our abdodo scheme apart from that uh, if you see the market uh, so many oems and everything the ecosystem the way is developing we are expecting at least one mms cmd of volume addition in the coming year at least okay that that is helpful and and these uh, abdodo stations they are are they coming up mostly in gujarat or outside of gujarat if you can give us some color are they in the city highway where, where are they coming up uh if you just count the number percentage wise i think more than 60 to 75% stations are coming in the gujarat where ecosystem is already developed well customers are already aware at the same time we have got the good response from other or outside gujarat also right and uh, okay last question on cng uh, is you mentioned that the volume trajectory outside gujarat is much faster than inside gujarat uh, this, this i think you said 14% in gujarat and 27% outside of gujarat can you help us understand how cng volumes are split across gujarat and rest of the markets current uh, cng volumes okay uh, outside i would like to say that uh, uh currently whatever the markets we are there outside gujarat are in proximity of few already developed cng markets and that's helping us a lot for example maharashtra bombay is very developed punjab and haryana that is also close to delhi and northern india where cng is there for more than decade or two decades so that is helping us a lot it's not just gujarat that uh, all markets which is near to this developed cng market that is also bringing growth to the company okay and and uh, the number the split between cng volumes gujarat and outside gujarat would you be able to help with any sort of percentage mix volume mix we know the number of stations that you disclose gujarat versus outside gujarat volume wise uh, practically 95% uh, more than 98 percentage is uh, outside gujarat and uh, rest is practically in gujarat sorry so it's not not 97 it's 87 percent it's in gujarat and rest is uh, outside gujarat great thank you very much and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of sabri hazarika from mk global please go ahead yeah so two questions uh, firstly uh, you said about the q1 capex uh, i didn't couldn't get it properly how much was it 206 206 crore okay and secondly so overall in terms of volumes uh, whatever you have mentioned so uh, i think earlier you have mentioned that almost like 14 15% could be the cng volume growth uh, target that you may be like looking at so does it remain that way or it could be higher than that because if you if you say that you would be adding one mms cmd then the cng volume growth could be like close to 20 25% so so what could be the right number to assume So what the part has been told is basically the FDODO scheme would be adding that volume of one MMS CMD that will span out over a period of one one and a half to two years. 
so that will go that's not going to come in entirely in this financial year so that 14% guidance for the cng still remains as it is okay and what about the overall guidance now overall guidance now looks like around 5 to 7% on a volume growth overall Bio, on an average level 5 to 7% yeah on a year on a year basis year on year average basis 5 to 7% of overall volume growth okay yeah. thank you so much yeah thank you the next question is from the line of varatha rajan siva sankaran from antec limited please go ahead uh, thanks for the opportunity sir just wanted to dwell on this uh, uh, procurement which you mentioned 49% you are getting from us uh, if you can give us some kind of a click on the overall volume uh, what you have done and then let like, you know what has been the mix uh, in terms of which contract and uh, incrementally when you are growing will you be looking only at uh, uh, procuring incrementally spot volumes or uh, do you uh, have plans or already uh, something in progress in terms of uh, contracts for the incremental growth volumes as well so on c we procured close to 11.09 and mmscmb of gas this quarter of that close to uh, 2.69 came from the apn and close to 3 approximately 3 came from the long term sources and the rest was sourced from the spot basically if you look at this this quarter the spot was cheaper in terms of even the long term so that's the reason uh, that is that's the practically the breakup of the sourcing mix sure going forward one can expect the incremental yeah, volumes to be also spot no no going see ultimately see there is a uh, fluctuation in the volumes with respect to industrial volumes which is coming in so basically once we have a stability in that basically we will getting into long term but again we are into in search of a, uh, getting into long term agreement anyway fair enough sir and in terms of this uh, margin once again i wanted to highlight like you know you were talking about the 4 and 1/2 to 5 and 1/2 but uh, if cng growth is going to be like you know higher can we expect this number to shift closer to 6 because cng obviously is more profitable than the industry may i think you need to look at our portfolio mix right practically we have industrial cng png and the commercial so if you look at it the ebitda guidance is based on the average of that sure and finally on the uh, non morbi industrial part uh, what is the kind of a growth one can actually look at because uh, outside of this 5 to 7% overall growth what you are referring to you also had this amjapat rural as like you know uh, creek growth area and you had already tied up some amount of uh, mous out there so you would have a better visibility of that market volume contribution over the next uh, year or two so in that context like you know the non morbi volume growth can we expect it to be higher than that or you want to still stick to the overall volume of ld and the thing the i think the the non morbi volume growth will almost be the same with the with respect to the guidance yes if at all we will be adding new and uh, see the amdad rural the the thane area and the dnh area we are expecting greater volumes but yes but it, there is a competition which is there with the alternative fuels etc so that's the reason we have kept the volume guidance at 5 to 7% so and non morbi like you know is it a structural growth we should assume over a longer period of time or do you think like you know after a, a growth in the next 2 to 3 years it could uh, moderate and uh, stay flat beyond that yeah we need to develop those areas we need to basically they have some alternative fuels over there we need to replace them we have to basically educate them yeah that's a that's a long uh, drawn process as you rightly said fine thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kirtan mehta from bob capital market please go ahead thank you so for the opportunity <clears throat> just taking forward on the non morbi volumes while we have been sort of signing the volumes for some time we had indicated 0.8 mm cmd plus but when we look at the non morbi volume growth yoy it has increased only by 0.2 mm cmd so far so are we losing any volume in the non morbi areas and which is getting replaced by the new volumes not exactly Uh, we are uh, developing the infrastructure in uh, as uh, rajesh has mentioned that in dadra nagar haveli thane and the rural and pitampura which is in near indore and of course uh, we are developing the infrastructure in kutch west also uh, we are uh, means uh, facing uh, some challenges the way uh, we face challenge in developing infrastructure but whatever the numbers we have uh, projected i think we'll be able to achieve it soon 
So at this point of time, you are guiding for five to seven percent growth in non-Murbi area for next couple of years, correct? Couple of years, no, but at least for two three quarters, I can say. Understood. In terms of the F two two scheme that we are offering, how how much basically the margin we will be offering? Would it be higher than what we offer to OMCs at this point of time? Uh, we have mentioned it. I mean, if you just see on the website or you uh, register with us, we are offering almost double the margin. Right. So it's quite attractive from the user perspective, dealer yes, perspective. Absolutely. And in terms of the Morbi, you mentioned about sort of the 35 to 40 percent pullback in the volume in the coming quarter. So, what is currently sort of the total demand rate, and how is the split between NG and propane at this point of time? I think the total volume in Morbi with respect to the fuel is close to six, and basically with respect to NG is close to 2.5 to 3. That's the NG volume which is there. And how are we uh, competitiveness versus propane at this point of time? We are at forty-four yeah, rupees or so. Yeah, I think we are costly are by close to four rupees. And this could continue through the winter season as well, or do we expect this to change? We we expect this to change. Let, let us see how the winter stands out, because the every every month and every quarter the things are changing now. So basically, let us see. That's the thing which we need to. We are always into and look out for that. Right. Couple of more questions, if I may. In terms of the gas purchase mix, we have said we are purchasing around three mm CMD from long term contract. If I remember, we had around five mm CMD of the long term contract. So has some of them expired, or we have backed them down because spot was cheaper? No, this is the procurement which we have done. The total contract is close to four point three. Close to 4.3. What I told you is the actual volumes, not the contracted volumes. Understood. Yeah. Just last question in terms of the ROEs are have taken a beating of around 15% from around 24-25% level that we have seen, and this is more on the back of margin correction that we have seen in the industrial volumes. And looking forward, also our guidance is four and half to five and half. So is this 15-16% margin trajectory is something that we are going to live with for next two three years, or do we? See this coming back to 20% plus level. No, see, I think see, uh, we have to have a, 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 a balance between the price and the volume. So, look, if you look at this quarter, we had a volume of close to 7.25 in industrial. That could be achieved because we had some uh, leverage on the margin. So, basically, we will be balancing both the things going forward. What would be but your target on ROE to sort of with this balance approach? I think it will be around 15. That that's the level we are looking at. Right, sir. Thanks for answering all these questions. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bank Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, when you discuss the Morbi volumes in first quarter, what was your PNG price and what was the propane price? Could you could you get that? We could not hear you. They just hold on. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, in the first quarter, for the, for the volumes you reported out of. Seven point two five. What was your PNG price, and what was the propane price in the first quarter? Our average PNG. You are you are talking of the industrial thing or the entire thing? Uh, in Morbi. Okay, in Morbi. Yeah, in Morbi, I think uh, the natural gas was uh, price was forty uh, two rupees per SCM, and uh, while propane was forty one rupees per SCM. Forty one. And so, at, uh, currently, after the price increase, your price is forty-four, and uh, propane is forty. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, if you look at your um, CNG station split between Gujarat and outside Gujarat, you know, thirty percent are outside Gujarat. Uh, but you're saying your CNG volume from outside Gujarat is only thirteen percent. So, do you see the per station throughput or the number of vehicles increasing in the GS outside uh, Gujarat? 
how do you see that playing out over the next uh, uh, two three years and uh, what is the profitability of the uh, new gas uh, based on the current uh, volumes and pricing there I think that see the new GAs are being developed in very greenfield area. So basically, the entire ecosystem for natural gas is being developed by the government along with the CGD company. So that, is, for example, if you look at Gujarat gas in Gujarat, it has taken a time to basically develop the entire ecosystem. So that uh, ecosystem is going is being developed over there, and, and gradually the growth will definitely come in. And we being the first player over there, and basically the infrastructure being there, will definitely get the benefits of the growth. Okay, so if if you're looking at your overall CNG volumes and the number of vehicles per day, is it possible to give a split of the category of vehicles? Because on an average, it looks like you're selling 7.5 uh, SCM uh, uh, per uh, per day per vehicle. So, is it possible to give a split uh, across the categories of vehicles? Uh, I would like to say that mainly it's four wheelers and three wheelers, uh, but the way you are asking the breakup is uh, is difficult to give. Okay, so if you're looking at your spot gas price, uh, what is the current spot gas price? And uh, uh, if you're looking at your uh, say third quarter once Morbi normalizes, uh, would you be able to get back to this uh, five and a half rupees margin uh, based on the current uh, you know gas mix and the spot gas prices? So presently, the if you look at the spot prices, it's around 13, and if even if, even our long term sourcing prices are around 13 to 14. So basically, we can we can we need to get back to more B at end when at all the propane practically gets closer to that. Okay, okay. So uh, so finally, if you, if you're looking at your CNG yeah, price, the, so yeah, I will just complete. Just let me complete. Based, based okay. on today's forward curves, basically, the, what I'm telling is based on the today's forward curve. curve going forward, the, the changes can occur in the forward curve, wherein we can make, become cheaper also. So that that is the thing. Okay. Okay. So uh, based on the CNG price increase you have taken, you have increased it by uh, two rupees, right? Uh, as of first August. So yeah. would. Uh, to, uh, based on the current growth in CNG, to what extent can you make up the shortfall in Morbi volume in terms of the you know overall uh, revenue and EBITDA you can generate for second quarter or EBITDA per SEM? Yeah, I don't think so. We are here to basically get a price from CNG to compensate for the industrial uh, volumes which are, or the margins which you are losing over there. I think we have been maintaining the price stability over a period of time, even the, in the previous years also such type of a cycles have happened and basically we have got over that and maintaining that pricing stability which is there. You know, I, I understand that. We all understand it because there's a, there's a cut in March. So you're yes, trying to understand in terms of the uh, impact on the second quarter, uh, to what extent, uh, you know, the CNG volumes and the increase in prices can off, offset that. So if you look at, say, the second half, Based on the CNG price increase and normalized volume, you should possibly back on trajectory in terms of the year on year growth and the EBITDA per CM, right? No, with respect to the CNG volumes, I don't think so. There is a, we are, we are, we are uh, coming down on the growth numbers because CNG is a product which practically everybody has to use. It's just as petrol is. There is, you, you have an inelastic demand over there. Okay. So with respect to industrial, basically you have a, uh, we, the customer has the option of switching it off and basically switching to the other fuel. Okay, so if you look at the longer term uh, trajectory in the biogas blending, uh, how does the economics work and what is the uh, target for biogas blending in your network, say, over the next two years? Uh, and uh, based on the current price that is payable to the biogas uh, producers, uh, I, we understand that biogas is actually cheaper than APM gas. So does it improve your overall uh, margins for the CNG segment or on a blended basis? Now, if you uh, if you see that uh, biogas is mainly operated under the Satat scheme, and uh, so many factors are being under the control of the producer, we are just the off taker. Uh, we have biogas in our pipeline, means we are off taking it uh, from a uh, uh, few suppliers, uh, but pricing and everything is controlled by Satat scheme. So we do we don't I want to comment on that. So, so one last thought. So, similarly on hydrogen blending, uh, like you are talking about 8% blend. Now, how does the economics there work? Because there is a certain cost here to incur for hydrogen, right? So, 
how is that being priced how do, what is the added average impact on your overall gas cost may i ask uh, see at azon did uh, basically it's a pilot project with the ntpc which we are doing it's only for that uh, ntpc has put up the hydrogen generating unit over there and it is only being uh, supplied to the staff quarters and the uh, and for the requirement of ntpc at a really specific level so only thing is we are this a pilot project to test the effectiveness of hydrogen bending into the pipeline etc so basically we are doing the testing of the pipeline etc whether how much blending can be done or not so during the pilot phase will it be booked in the pnl or will it be capitalized because that's a, that's a sense uh, that one wants to get so it's a pilot project that for the see the hydrogen is being given by this ntpc because it's their project we are just blending it in the system Okay, fair enough. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sezal Agarwal from Desvelado Advisory. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. So, sir, your company has provided guidance to set up 200 plus CNG stations over next two to three years. From which around 25 to 30 stations is planned to be added in FY25. But in the recent quarter, we saw an add-on of only three CNG stations. So, is this guidance is still in place and seems achievable? Also, please elaborate on the factors contributing to slower than expected rollout and how company plans to accelerate the pace to meet the long-term target. Actually, if you just uh, means you have studied our scheme, uh, Abdodo, where we are going to participate with uh, so many uh, business partners. and uh, uh, capex and project management everything will be done by the applicants or our business partner and that's the reason we are hopeful that we will increase the speed of developing infrastructure for cng station uh, that's why we have targeted this number and we we are going to implement from next month okay thank you wish you all the luck thank you very much Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratyush Kamal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so, hello, sir. Uh, first of all, congratulations for having a good set of numbers. So, a couple of questions. First, would be again, uh, you said that about forty-five percent, forty-six percent of uh, the volumes are the sourcing volumes are coming from the spot. So I just wanted to understand the reasoning for uh, having that uh, dependency and uh, on spot, given the fact that the spot prices are too volatile in the market, and we have seen it across the years from 2020 to 2024. So, and second would be, I think that there is some Qatar uh, gas contract which needs to be renegotiated in the middle of 2025, if I am not wrong. So, what is the update on that, and how do you think? I think that uh, the, the current contract is at 14% of slope. So, do you think it would come down to 10% or 12%, or would it remain remain the same? Okay, first of all, with respect to your question of that, uh, uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Yeah, with, yeah. With respect to your question of the sourcing of gas and why short term is more. See, we we were we were uh, we were better to propane during this quarter. so basically there is a as i told you there's a there's a volatility in the prices of gas and the propane which is affecting the long term sustainability volumes in morbi so and other other problem is basically the short term uh, the apm being there is a shortfall of apm close to 25 percentage so these two have contributed to the uh, sourcing of short term gas and if you look at the short term gas has come at a much cheaper price than the long term which you are sourcing for this quarter at least understood Yeah, and how about the second part? Like, uh, what is the update on the Qatar renegotiation uh, long-term contract? Uh, it's currently at 14% of slope, so would it be coming down to 10 or 12%, or how do you see it? I I think the, the sourcing part is being the main agreement is being from uh, done from GSPC side. So GSPC is in the process of uh, talking to Qatar. So once the, that back-to-back, then uh, subsequently once they, it is finalized, there will be back-to-back agreement with Qatar. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayank Maheshwari from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Well, thank you for doing the call, sir. Uh, question in terms of the rollout of your network, um, can you just talk 
experts in terms of where or uh, how are you seeing roll out of network in different part of geographical areas that you're expanding and where you are seeing uh, demand growth outperforming your own expectations and where it's been slower uh, as 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 we mentioned earlier also means we are focusing mainly uh, if you talk about the industrial market then we are focusing on Ahmedabad rural Thane uh, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Pitampura, which is near Indoor, and of course, Kurt's rest. So if for industry volume, focus is there on uh, this uh, market for new net network development. For uh, CNG stations, of course, uh, Gujarat is a major focus, but the market, uh, we are close to Delhi and Bombay, and uh, uh, where CNG is already developed, we are focusing in nearby GAs in those markets also. So these are the main uh, volume drivers for us in coming uh, quarters. Okay. And in terms of um, like your expectations versus the growth that you've seen in these industrial areas, have you seen faster growth in specific areas or it's pretty much online what you have kind of thought about before when you roll out these networks? We are uh, means expecting a quick and faster growth in uh, this market. Uh, apart from that, uh, all the existing market or where we are present, we are getting uh, good growth in those market also. And in terms of your capex of about 1000 crores, how much is getting allocated to the new areas and how much is it in the existing? It's almost 50-50 because in, uh, we have to develop the newer areas more. So most of the capex, 50% of the capex is going towards the newer areas, the new GAs. And the rest is basically for consolidating a portion in the existing uh, places, especially Ahmedabad and all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gagan Dikshit from Elara Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, but when you at the start says that you are closely following the this propane market uh, futures market so so what what i assume basically uh, you are targeting something uh, price difference between your uh, industrial gas price and the propane price uh, something range you are targeting that's what my understanding is yeah i think see uh, ultimately the customer has the option to switch between the two fuels so i have to compete with uh, propane Mm -hmm. So, what's the typical, uh, I mean, uh, your understanding is the, I mean, the premium of the gas uh, over the propane at which uh, you think that customer will remain with the Gujarat gas, so there's no risk to the demand. I think uh, in the last quarter you indicated Morbi, your gas is one rupee costlier versus the propane, but still the, uh, that uh, uh, you get the demand. So, uh, can I safely assume that this, even this one rupee premium is that something that uh, you are comfortable uh, with the, uh, I mean, propane over the gas? Yeah, it is between one to two rupees. Basically, if, uh, after that, basically the switch happens. Okay, 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 okay. And uh, actually, uh, this my my final question is about that uh, this uh, industrial volume outside Morbi. That uh, uh, I think Morbi is around six seven cmd. Outside is around one point two five cmd. So. Can you give some broad, broader breakup of the uh, outside the geographies like industrial volume and, and typically what is the uh, volume growth you have witnessed on YYB? Yeah, yeah, it's basically coming from uh, Surat and uh, Surat and Kaleshwar Baruch areas and Surendra Nagar areas. These are the areas wherein the other than Murbi is coming in. Okay, okay. So Surat and Kleshabha, which is the uh, typically uh, traditional Wapi. geography of the Gujarat gas. Yes, yeah, Wapi is also there. There is also an industrial wealth over there. Okay, 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 okay. And what's the YY growth that uh, typically you have seen uh, in the in these areas? I think the dependent all talked about that growth. Yes, we, we are expecting uh, seven to eight percent growth in this market. Okay, okay, okay. And so my final question is that uh, in the Morbi, uh, uh, this what is the uh, you you expect if uh, your gas uh, remain competitive? Uh, uh, let's assume for the for the next 12 months versus the propane. So, so what is the I, I mean from the existing customers, so you expect the volume uh, peak volume you can touch uh, in the Morbi region? I mean, if the customer try to take all the volume from the gas instead of propane. You you mean to say what we should do? 
yeah yeah that's what the potential in the morbi is possible yeah total morbi potential is close to 8 is the morbi potential of gas okay okay sir that's that's from my side sir yeah thank you thank you the next question will be from the line of vishnu kumar as from avendis park please go ahead uh, thanks sir thanks sir I just want to understand the uh, capex numbers that we are likely to do over the next 3 to 5 years um, what will be the quantum that we we are likely to do considering all the gas investments that is required i think you are you are talking about next 3 years or in a, three, 3 to 4 5 years what is the strategy i mean how much capex would be required from our side to uh, to uh, to maintain our commitments if you are for maintaining commitment as per the uh, bidding rounds i do, i don't think so there is much of commitment which are which is left back except for the domestic connections which we have to do with respect to the capex will we will like to do is it should to be close to 1000 to 1200 to 1500 crores that's the range which we are looking at we will we will and the plans will come in once we have finalizing the growth plans with the expansion plans in those areas where we are getting in now because these are all areas okay. which are expanding in a big way now so basically all this plans will be finalized before the uh, before the beginning of the year but yes ex- uh, you can expect that around 12 1200 to 1500 crores of a capex going forward understood so the, over the last 4 5 years we have uh, invested close to 3500 to 4000 crores of capex uh, how much of this would have been in new areas let's say investment on cng and let's say our current areas any rough idea if you could help us understand it's close to maybe 40% 40 to 50 40 to 45% would have been in the new areas because that's the area we had a commitment towards okay got it sir so basically the question uh, is on the uh, uh, is on the volume strategy i mean we have seen more more volume growth happening up and down on morbi but the non morbi volume has been pretty static in a in a broader range i mean obviously we have made we would have made a lot of efforts what is not really helping us g- gain the volume momentum in this market is it any particular reasons that we can ascribe and how confident are we let's say uh, on the xcng volumes that in the newer areas that we will be able to convert more uh, given our uh, last four years we not been able to do much i think uh, is, uh, obviously that uh, alternate uh, fuel prices we are highly competitive and uh, allowing uh, some of the markets they are allowing coal for nas oil and you know that is very difficult to compete with those kind of fuel and that alternate fuel price is the major competition so in the newer areas before laying a line i mean or investing capex any particular strategy or we will wait for any governmental action before we deploy the capex otherwise Uh, if you are not able to draw the volumes because of the xyz reasons then uh, i mean an overall investment strategy or the return ratios may be a little not to the expected uh, return so uh, so from that standpoint we would be having any second thoughts or we will still go ahead because at the end of the day is a chicken and egg uh, story you we'll have to lay the line and then volume comes how 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 does uh, how do we think about that no no each uh, each of the projects with respect to expansions are evaluated with respect to the project viability and the commerciality so once we are certain of those things then only the capex plans are executed first okay got it sir and just one final question on the morbi itself let's say uh, how much of the volume should be in our opinion sticky volumes uh, uh, let's say even if the price gap between mor the propane and uh, uh, are i mean propane and gas would be more than 5 or 4 or 5 rupees if the delta remains how much of that volume can be considered very sticky is it like 3 Three and a half, or say two to one half. That depends uh, on how the customer, whether customer has a uh, source for alternative fuel or not. But that has changed over a period of time. So we, uh, it, it would be to range maybe two and a half to three or something like that. But still, we are not certain on that. Got it. Sir. And and just before to close, uh, any medium term target in terms of volumes that we have in mind over the three. Three to four years. Let's say we are currently, I mean, nearing uh, the eleven mark, uh, near, near the eleven mark. So, do we have any number in mind? Let's say by three, four years, we will do fourteen, fifteen MMS. I mean, any rough math? Given all the areas that we are having, what would be our internal target uh, that we are probably looking at, or even a range, if you can help us understand? 
say we will be happy with a range of around uh, around 10 percentage, maybe plus minus something. But the problem is we have a uh, we have a product like industrial volume which is practically volatile. So that practically affects the yearly volume guidance. Okay, and and just on this new FDODO model that we are we are now targeting, uh, considering the higher cost of let's say uh, the transportation and the margin uh, that we have to possibly give because uh, of the delta of between petrol and I mean other see, petrol diesel CNG has to be maintained. So the incremental volumes probably comes at a lower margin for us. Is that right understanding on CNG? No, that's not the right understanding. Because whatever the OPEX and everything is there will be uh, passed on to the dealer and the company will maintain and sustain its margin. Got it, sir. Thanks for all the best. Thank you. The last question for today is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bank Equities. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you for the follow up. So, uh, when we look at the discussions on bringing natural gas under GSP, have you seen any? Uh, internal discussions between the industry and the government, in the sense in terms of the timeline, and we, uh, would, would, would it be safe to assume that for the uh, industrial uh, customers, we'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, see the customers enjoying the benefit of that six percent VAT, and uh, that could, you know, enhance the competitiveness of PNG, and thereby, you know, potentially um, help you grow faster. Is that the way to understand the impact of GST? See, we will always welcome GST uh, gas being part of GST because it helps the customer as well as the industry as such. Basically, yeah, so, all the yeah. yeah so, so, in terms of right. the maths, uh, uh, basically that six percent VAT will possibly be the saving for the end use customer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any sense in terms of the timeline when we can expect that, or is it still uh, work in progress? We are all on the same page on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sandeep Tawe, Company Secretary, for closing comments. Thank you. Uh, to summarize, we have been able to make a good comeback in this quarter as compared to Q1 of previous finance year. We will continue to focus on increasing volumes while maintaining a fine balance between volumes and margin. We continue to be optimistic about CNG volumes with planned increase in stations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Gujarat Gas Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>